my pitch that I always give is that baseball physics are much richer than other sports balls, and uh, uh, it's a lot of fun to look at. I brought a visual aid. Perfect. <laughs> I just Big fan of visual aids, yes. This yes, is great. I have a baseball. Uh, and this baseball has my homemade Pitching Ninja logo on it, by the way. It's got this shape of, this, uh, of the, the seam pattern. You see that shape on a few other sports balls, uh, but not in conjunction with seams of this shape in, in, in size. And so what's interesting about it is the ball flies through the air, you can have a seam on the front and a seam on the back at the same time. The one on the front will cause the flow to become turbulent, and the one on the back will cause the boundary layer to separate. And that can be asymmetric, and that causes forces on the ball. If the ball, if the ball is moving this way, um, the air flows over the top and the bottom, and it, it only encounters smooth leather. Baseballs are smooth enough that at 90 miles an hour, where they're typically the typical speed for a baseball, the boundary layer will stay laminar, meaning that it's steady. Um, it, uh, it's it, smooth. It, smooth, yeah, it doesn't fluctuate in time. And one of the funny things about the laminar boundary layers that's counterintuitive to most people is that if you have a laminar boundary layer on a bluff body like a ball, the boundary layer will leave the surface and create a wake sooner than a turbulent one will. Uh, so if the flow is turbulent, if I turn the ball like this, and so now I've encountered this bump, uh, the flow will become turbulent and actually it forms a smaller wake. And this is the reason golf balls are divoted, is to, to create turbulence so that they have a smaller wake. Um, but, but the golf ball is homogeneous, it's the same everywhere, whereas the baseball I can have the seams sitting like this and one side will be very different than the other side. And if you can find a way to make that happen steady, uh, then the pitch will divert as a result of it. And that's the, the interesting stuff that we're looking at. I have another visual aid. This, this ball is speared in a very magic way. Uh, it took us, it took, took us, it was probably Andrew that figured this out. I had one where this, the spear was through it like this, through the center of the ball, which I would think would be where you want it. But if I spin this, you can see that red, red line. That, let me try that like this. I'll get this. You can see a, a, a red line here. If I had this going through the center of the ball, you wouldn't see that. And if you have a ball that's spinning like that, that means that most of the time on the back of the ball, the seam is sitting in that nice orientation to make this happen, and it will divert the, the path of the ball. And so pitchers can do this, and a couple of them do. And I think that this is something that's only becoming known very recently. There's one pitcher that's been advertising it for about five or six years. Uh, his name's Trevor Bauer. He's currently with the Reds and uh, pitched for the Indians in the World Series a couple of years ago. Um, and he is a mechanical engineer. He's a UCLA graduate, I believe. Well, I think he understands a lot of it, um, and he definitely throws the pitch that way on purpose. And, um, and he calls it a laminar express. As re uh, so he gave it a name, and uh, Andrew is trying to replace the name. <laughs> yeah. So I don't so have to pay you all. I think it's a it. seam shifted wake instead of laminar express, because there's actually no real laminar flow on his pitch. There's, there's no orientation on a baseball you can throw it where there will always be smooth leather, leather on one side, so you're always gonna end up with turbulence no matter how you throw it. There's always gonna be a seam. So, so it's not laminar, so yeah. it's seam shifted. Se seam shifted wake, which is trademarked from Andrew Smith. <laughs> yep. until, until the laminar express came along, the seams in the ball, the orientation of the ball, had nothing to do with where the ball goes because pitchers are generally using Magnus effect, which is uh, a force that's generated from a spinning sphere as it moves through the, through the air. And um, pitchers do use the seams to make the ball spin a certain way, but once it's left their hand, the seams don't have anything to do with Magnus effect. So when you see a, cur a curve ball is, a, is, is basically top spin, a fastball is basically back spin, a slider is something more gyro like this. And so uh, pitchers make the ball spin different ways by how it comes off, the, the, how their fingers come off the seams. So what Andrew and I are working on is new in that the orientation of the seams actually matters. And it's, I think it's a knife edge. It doesn't work very consistently. I don't think that anybody knows exactly where the seams need to be, but I think we have demonstrated that it's happening. We can probably hone in on where it needs to be. And that's, in, in fact, if, if Andrew can figure out where it needs to be, he graduates. Yeah. <laughs> that's his thesis topic. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, I think it could matter, too, if you just take pitches that are already used. You take a curve ball and then you just make it so your seam during a certain pace. You may have an additional force that causes that ball to move in a more unpredictable way for a batter. It takes maybe a pitcher who has three pitches and maybe maybe gives him two more that are similar. He doesn't have to change any of his mechanics. He can throw the ball the same way. Maybe get an additional uh, amount of movement. So far we've seen a changeup, which is a changeup is traditionally a pitch that's thrown. Um, if I throw a fastball with um, 
I throw a fastball like this, two fingers behind the ball. A changeup is typically thrown um, where you remove this finger. The idea is to make the batter think you're throwing a fastball because you're doing it exactly the same way, except for you've taken your strong finger off the ball. This uh, disco ball changeup that has the seam shifted wake typically ends up spinning with the axis almost vertically, and that allows it to have downward force on it in addition to the Magnus force to the side. So that's, uh, and I think that that's a coincidence that it ended up being like that. The pitchers that throw it, uh, for whatever reason, the fastball with the spin on an axis about like this, the changeup ends up spinning almost totally vertically. And that's why um, uh, Mr. Augustine has named it a disco ball changeup because it, it's just spinning like it's hanging from the ceiling. Is it literally you two throwing pitches? No. No, neither <laughs> of us could hit it anywhere close enough to be able to Andrew hit it. Andrew pitches hit it. better than I do. And I'm not good at all. <laughs> he can hit the net from 50 feet. I can't. <laughs> we have an undergrad. Undergrad is better, but even still, we have a cannon that actually shoots the balls for us. So that's uh, way more reliable and precise than we are. And we're doing PIV, so we have kind of a narrow window to get the ball in. So PIV is particle image velocity symmetry. It basically, we we fill a field with, or like that area with smoke in this case, or just particles. And then as we shoot the ball, we take a picture, shoot a laser through it in a sheet, and then take a picture of that sheet. And then we take two real cl close together and see where the particles have gone. All of this amazing knowledge has not actually improved your personal baseball game. No, <laughs> definitely not. But it did start there. I mean, the, the reason I started down this line of work is because my son pitches, and I was trying to understand what a two seam fastball is because from what I knew about fluid dynamics, a two-seam fastball and a four-seam fastball should do the same thing, and they don't. And um, because uh, my understanding was purely Magnus force, and, and then all it cares about is the axis of rotation and the, and the rotation rate. But uh, that's where we started, and uh, uh, we built a system to, to study this, and, and it's led to these other things. The seam-shifted wake is what we're here to talk about at APS, but we have also looked a little bit on drag on baseballs, which is a big topic this year, and, and found that um, very minor changes in the, site, the height of a seam um, can make a very big difference in the drag in the ball and, and relates directly to the rate of home runs in Major League Baseball, which is a big topic this year. This ball is from 2019. It has a very small seam on it, and most of them do. So um, it, it, baseball has a very funny relationship with, with um, nostalgia, and, uh, and I think people really like the fact that the balls are handmade, but now that they're realizing that they, their aerodynamic properties are very widely scattered, everybody's like, what the heck, why aren't we? Uh, there's quality control at Rawlings. They, they look to make sure that the leather is white and uh, some other things, but they don't look at, they don't currently measure the height of the seams. And I think that they, I'm pretty confident by next year they will. Well, they can pay us to do it. Yeah, we're willing to do that work.